Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the things that we're going to discuss is lodging in corn. Why is it happening and what can you do to prevent it from happening in the future on your farm? We're also going to talk a little about winter wheat seeding. As we get toward fall, I'm sure you're thinking about that on your farm if you're a wheat producer. So today we want to talk through just a little bit in terms of fertility and seed treatments, maybe a little bit on weed control. Just talking about some of the decisions you're going to have to make on your farm this year. And one of those decisions that you'll be making is about our weed of the week. How do you get this thing under control? We'll talk about that later in our show, but first, here's our Farm Basics. Stop losing money from your stored grain with the Enzone Fan Control System from Farm Shop MFG. The Enzone monitors outside conditions to run your fans so your grain naturally reaches ideal temperature and humidity. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time each week, we will typically talk about something we do on the farm and try to relate it to non-farmers. So if you are a non-farmer, you can kind of understand a little bit better just some of our activities out here in agriculture. But today we want to speak just a little bit more directly to farmers, especially when it relates to grain bin safety. Well, and here's something that we all can remember from growing up about the buddy system, right? If you went swimming, well, you gotta have a buddy with you. Or as you're crossing the street, you might hold somebody else's hand and have a buddy going along with you. It doesn't matter how old you are, you do need a buddy when you're working around a grain bin. Well, it's not so much around the grain bin, I don't mind that, but I do mind it in the grain bin. In the grain bin, that's where you want someone else with you. And also, we would highly encourage you to have a harness system that's hooked to something either outside the bin or way toward the top inside the bin. So if you do get sucked down for any reason, you can quickly get pulled back up. It does not take long. It's just a matter of a few minutes and something can be life changing, unfortunately, that could happen in that bin. There have been far too many grain bin accidents over the years and that's why we're talking about it today. Even though I'm sure you've heard it a million times over the years, it doesn't hurt to hear it one more time as we go into this fall harvest season. Well, everyone just assumes that what's in a grain bin is consistent all the way through, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Look at the harvest season that we had in 2019 and the variability that we saw across many of those fields. We had a great difference in moisture content, in the quality of those grain kernels going into bins in 2019. That sets you up for having some moisture issues, potentially some insect issues, and, and that could lead to problems as you're trying to empty that bin. So if you're a non-farmer, what this really amounts to, and what we talk most about is spoilage of the grain. When the grain starts to spoil, that's where we get things like crusting, we get plugging in that grain bin, and then farmers feel the need to jump in the grain bin, just like I have done myself in the past, and try to break up some of that crusting, get the grain to flow, get the grain to move out of that grain bin. So one of the things that we now do on the farm is put sensors into the bin so we can constantly monitor that temperature. That's a big indicator of whether or not we have spoilage and whether or not we have a problem. The other thing that we do anymore, most farms will have bin fan controls. So very easily we can have that fan going on and off based on whatever the temperature is and the humidity is outside. So we can have that grain in better condition for a longer period of time. You look at what happened this last year, grain prices crashed. So a lot of people like us, we were planning to sell our grain much earlier than we ended up selling a lot of our grain and we still have some grain left from last year. Well, when you're going to have grain for 10 months or 11 months, there is a high probability that something's going to go wrong in that bin unless it's constantly monitored. And we've seen so many new bins going up this year, and especially in areas that there weren't a whole lot of grain bins to start with, like the southeastern part of the United States, where a lot of the grain was going directly to poultry farms or to ethanol plants. And some of those plants have closed down, some of the poultry barns have had to shutter their production, and all of a sudden the grain demand just isn't there like it normally is. So we're seeing some new bins going up, and they're expensive to do. I get it don't skimp on the last few hundred dollars to get some of these sensors that Brian's talking about. You're going to need those and also 
I know many times we neglect to read the manuals on things. Read the manuals so you can be safe around these grain bins so they're a blessing to your farm. Well, once again, we would just highly encourage you if you are a farmer and you need to go into a bin, have someone with you, have a harness on your body and hooked to the either outside of the bin or up high inside the bin so you can quickly get out if things start to go wrong. Well, one of the things that goes wrong, unfortunately, on a lot of farms as well is poor weed control, but we'll show you how to stop this week's weed coming up later in the show. If you want unparalleled performance from your corn head, you need the Diamant from Capello USA. Fully hydraulic deck plates chop with speed and precision, and chain-free gearboxes make a quieter, more efficient machine. The Diamant's revolutionary quick-release snouts and bonnets prevent damage and make maintenance a breeze. And our folding option allows for clear visibility on roads, making travel between fields safe, quick, and easy. For more ways the Diamant can innovate your corn harvest, contact your Capello dealer today. Capello, wherever you are, we are. Where we have run the Soil Warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the Soil Warrior. Downtime during spraying can lead to huge yield losses. Keep rolling with the Pentair Hypro Force Field. This pump features a unique self-regulated chamber that allows the pump to run dry while eliminating cracked seals, so you can spray longer and more reliably. Learn more at pentair.com slash hypro. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm and use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit mybearplus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. Agro Liquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. If you're getting ready for winter wheat seeding, there are a lot of decisions you have to make. So today we'll talk through just some of the basic things that you may be thinking about on your farm this year. One great opportunity you have with a crop already harvested and ground that hasn't been planted yet is to get drain tile done. This is a great time of year to get it done. And you may think, well, I'm planting winter wheat. I'm not so worried about the drainage. You might not be right now, but you could be next spring. One of the most important things you need to do on your farm always is manage the water. Now, I'm not talking about irrigation here, although if you can get irrigation, that's great. But in terms of keeping the water table down, that is absolutely critical for every single crop. Now, a lot of times when we start thinking about wheat country in general, it's a little bit drier and I get that, believe me. So you might think, well, sooner or later, I'm gonna run short on moisture. So why don't I just keep as much moisture in my field as I can? I'm not suggesting that you get rid of any good moisture. I'm simply suggesting you get rid of the toxic moisture. And what I mean by that is when the water table is too high, it kills things. What does toxic mean? It means it kills. When the water table gets too high, that means there's no air left in that soil, which means your roots are not going to survive, which means all your aerobic microbes that are beneficial to the crop are not going to survive. So you need to keep the water table down and it might only be a few spots on your farm. We do a lot of spot tiling on our farm, for example. We're in a dry area of the United States. We get 20 or 22 inches of total annual precip, including the snow. But we still need tile, especially in a lot of the low grounds keeping that water table down is absolutely critical and it sets everything else up you want to do. In other words, where I'm going with this is all your other in input investments you're gonna make on your farm are not going to pay off nearly as well if you have poor drainage. 
One other thing that's really an opportunity before you plant winter wheat is to do a good job soil sampling out on your farm and adjust the fertility in your soil. It's a great time of year to soil sample. The weather is good. The soils labs are not as busy. You can get results back quickly. Also, fertilizer application, those rigs are less busy this time of year too. So you can get fertilizer work done and start building soil levels up to where not just this crop, but every crop you're going to raise in the future can be more successful. I could talk about a whole bunch of nutrients, phosphorus, potassium, maybe some of the micros like boron and zinc or copper. Copper is super important for wheat. But what I want to focus on, just one nutrient today, that's it, sulfur. We see a lot of sulfur deficiencies in wheat, in part because there's not a lot of air pollution anymore in the United States. So we're not getting sulfur raining down from the sky. And then the other thing is, as yields have continued to go up over time, we're just simply seeing not enough applied sulfur to meet the needs of that crop. Keep in mind, sulfur is leachable, so sulfur a lot of times will leave your field every single year, not only with crop removal, but also with moisture. So add some sulfur this year for better success in your wheat and also better nitrogen utilization in your wheat crop. Another thing that we can really address at this point is weed control, especially of resistant weeds. There's been a lot of talk about resistant kochia and other weeds that are getting more difficult to control in wheat growing areas. You can get after that right now ahead of this winter wheat crop with an application of Sharpen. Sharpen is fantastic on broadleaf weeds. Great for burn down, great for residual. The only thing I don't like is it costs some money. It's probably gonna be eight or nine bucks an acre for two ounces. If you wanna go cheap, you can go prepare. Now prepare is only gonna cost you probably $3, maybe $4 an acre, that's it. But it's an ALS herbicide. It's got good activity on a lot of different grasses, so that's nice, but it's not going to kill the ALS resistant weeds like kochia, water hemp, or palmer pigweed. Now, when you said go cheap, Brian, that made me really nervous because one of the things that we see some wheat producers doing, not just in our country, but all around the world, is going cheap on seed treatment. On wheat, that just seems crazy to me. When you look at the different crops that are being raised, like corn and soybeans, for example, there's a lot of genetic enhancement to improve disease tolerance. In wheat, we've got a ways to go. We need all the protection we can get, and seed treatments are one of the cheapest ways to do that. So do treat your seed. Do look at the seed treatments this year for your farm, and if you have to do a trial on your farm, leave a very small amount untreated. It's a big difference that you should notice in the field. We encourage you to put on multiple fungicides, probably three different fungicides won't cost you a lot of money. And then on top of that, we would encourage you put on some insecticide. Now, if you need to bump the rate because you have a lot of wireworm issues, just bump the rate a little bit. Again, it does not cost that much. Now, on top of fungicide and insecticide, think about some of the biologicals that are out there. So on our farm, for example, when we're putting wheat out or we're gonna seed some rye here shortly, what we'll put on is heat shield and we'll use some NutriCycle. So with those products, we're getting beneficial bacteria and fungi that actually will help emergence. We are seeing better nutrient uptake in the plant through tissue analysis. Plus overall, at the end of the season, we're just seeing better yield. And that's really what it's all about. You've got a chance right now to set this winter wheat crop up for tremendous success this year. Don't cut corners. If you've got drainage issues out there, now's your chance to install that drain tile that you've needed to for years. If you've got fertility that needs to get built up, we specifically mentioned sulfur, here's a great chance to do that. With weed control, you can stop resistant weeds before you ever have to face them post-emerge with an application of Sharpen for broadleaf weeds. And then of course, take a look at seed treatment for your wheat to protect it from disease and insects. Well, Darren mentioned weed control in there, and we've got our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. Can you identify this week's weed? Stop losing money from your stored grain with the end zone fan control system from Farm Shop MFG. Hot spots and moisture in your bin can cost you thousands in lost revenue. The end zone monitors outside conditions to run your fans exactly when you want them to, naturally bringing your grain to ideal temperature and humidity. Master bin management with the end zone. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com.
find love and give it all away. As a global planner consultant, Yield Track caught my attention because it eliminated so many of the agronomic compromises that growers face. YieldTrack is a partnership between Case IH and Orwood Sales, and since 2012, it has been the only planter designed around tracks, as opposed to trying to figure out how to mount tracks to a planter. The results are a stronger, faster, and lighter machine that gives uniform seed depth placement while carrying more fertilizer and seed at a 14 PSI footprint or less impacting yields 8 to 19 bushel per acre depending on the wetness of the planting season with a greater response the wetter the spring. Contact Norwood Sales to learn more on using a yield track planter to improve your farm's profitability. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. When you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing to look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line, then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. About a month ago, we talked a little about lodging in crops and just how important it is to have the right fertility out there, potassium, manganese, and copper. Today, we wanna to focus a little bit more on picking which fields you're going to harvest first this fall and just evaluating some other things that you might see in the crop, including some diseases that could impact lodging here this fall. You know, we were gonna talk about this today on the show and Brian said, hey, Darren, here's your shot to talk about some of these diseases that you've been harping on all summer. One of those has been physoderma. We've seen more physoderma across the country this year than ever before. And it's really surprising to me. I thought the way the weather turned out, it might not be as bad, but wow, we're seeing it. And when you've got physoderma, first of all, you need to be able to identify it. So watch for those purple spots on the leaves or down the stalk. And then the next thing to watch out for is node breakage. So this corn can actually snap right at those nodes. And if that happens, it's on the ground and you can't harvest it. So Brian mentioned harvestable grain. Well, if you've got physoderma out in the field, that field needs to move to the top of your harvest order and you need to take it a little bit wetter. So you need to be prepared for that. If you don't have a dryer on your farm, start looking for what's an outlet where I could take some 24% moisture corn so I make sure I get it in the combine instead of on the ground. So the whole point is before harvest, we want you walking out in your fields. And I realize it's very common once that corn gets above waist high, you may not be spending a lot of time in the field anymore. But we would just highly encourage you, evaluate your fields for which ones should get harvested first, not with moisture, but with which ones are most at risk. Because you might think, oh, I don't know, everything is looking fine so far. But you and I both know if a big wind comes along tomorrow night, what's going to happen? it's going to tip over and the fields that are most at risk, those are the ones you want to get out hopefully before that wind comes. When you look at corn stalks, if they look nice and yellow on the outside all the way up and down, or, or they're still green, even better yet, awesome. You can wait with that field, you can let it dry down in the field a little bit more, that's great. But when you see black up the side of that stalk, you need to be really concerned. And this is where we're talking about anthracnose. Some hybrids have less tolerance to anthracnose than others. And if you find that you've got one of those hybrids out in your field and you're seeing black up the outside of the stem, plan to harvest that field early and think about what we're gonna do with that residue. Because if you leave that residue out in the field, all these diseases that we're talking about, many of them, I shouldn't say all, but many of them are going to survive in that residue. And the next time you've got corn or a susceptible crop out there, it's going to splash up onto your new stalks and leaves and create more disease problems again. So if you've got anthracnose out there, harvest early, pick some different hybrids going forward, and then do something in your residue management program to get that residue broken down and gone so you don't have the problem going forward. 
my favorite thing I hear each fall is when Darren comes in after looking at fields and he goes, Brian, the corn's starting to break down. We better go harvest. <laughs> Look, every fall, the corn is going to break down. That's literally what it does. It cannibalizes itself. So it does break down the roots, the stalk, the leaves, everything, and it feeds that ear. So all we're trying to do today is help you figure out, well, which ones are breaking down the most? Which ones are putting you most at risk? And what I encourage you to do is walk in those fields and shake the stalks a little bit. See if the ears drop off. If the ears are dropping off with barely touching them, that means you need to be out there quick. If the stalk is breaking by barely touching it, you need to be out there quick. And yes, I realize you don't want to harvest 24% moisture. You'd rather harvest 19 or 18% moisture, but that's just the way it goes. I'd way rather spend some drying money than see my corn end up on the ground. Well, one thing I would like to see completely broken down and dead on the ground is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduce drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> is black seed plantain. This is a perennial weed. I know a lot of times you see it around the edges of yards and you think, ah, it's no big deal because it doesn't even have a stem above ground. It's just got leaves and eventually a seed head. You think, ah, it's not a big problem, but it's a perennial. It's going to be a problem for you, especially if you let it go to seed. So we want to get this one under control. Yeah, I'll tell you too, if you're looking for an identifying feature, it has little to no hair on it. But like Darren said, it is kind of, to me, weird when there's no above ground stem, just a bunch of leaves. All right, so let's talk about it in a variety of situations. First, if you had it out in a cornfield, I would start with Verdict Down. The Sharpen that's in the Verdict is gonna do a good job burning it down. Of course, if you've got Roundup Post-Emerge or Liberty, you're gonna do a nice job burning off the top. Roundup would be the better one to get down into the root system. I also like Status in corn. Seems to do a nice job on plantain. Okay, when you turn to wheat, what I would probably suggest is starting again with Sharpen. Use two ounces though, not just one. Two ounces is key if you want good burn down and residual control. Post-emerge, we don't have a lot of great choices. If it was me, I'd probably pick Husky, but there's nothing that's gonna be perfect on this tough perennial weed. All right, in soybeans, little different story. We wanna start with the three pre's always. We're gonna do a decent job burning it back with some Valor or Authority, and if you have Roundup in that burn down, it's gonna make a world of difference for you. Post-emerge, it's a perennial weed, so Roundup's your best choice. We've often found success though with some Cobra or Flexstar mixed in with almost anything. In lawns, there's, again, nothing perfect, but you can certainly burn this weed back with 2,4-D. Might take two or three shots per year for multiple years, but eventually you will get it under control. We do prefer the 2,4-D choline version like Freelex or Enlist One, if that is labeled in your area. Otherwise, old 2,4-D, you gotta be real careful about where you use it because of all the vapor coming off that particular chemistry. It's all time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. engineered to be the most advanced concave system available. The XBR system threshes all crops, reduces grain loss, and significantly improves grain quality and storability. Probably the biggest difference that we noticed right away was the grain quality. The sample was much better with this XBR system. Now we've cut down rotor loss significantly. I can switch out a two pound cover plate in just a few minutes and jumped about 30% more on our capacity. Visit EstesPerformanceConcaves.com. Each year brings new and unique challenges to farming, and your operation needs to constantly adapt to meet them. 
That's why at AgBiome, we're working every day to bring you new and better solutions. Microbial-based solutions that protect your crop and help it reach its full potential. To learn more about how we're doing it, visit agbiome.com. AgBiome, feeding the world responsibly. Partnering with microbes for human benefit. How much money are you leaving in the bin? If you want the most profit from your stored grain, you need the Grain Temp Guard from Farm Shop MFG. This low cost bin monitoring solution tracks temperature and humidity and gets your grain in ideal condition. And with deep preseason discounts on all Grain Temp Guard units, now is the best time to upgrade. Don't leave your money out in the bin, get the most from your grain. Order today at farmshopmfg.com. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy, all the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. When you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. If deep tillage is on your to-do list this fall, we'll discuss how you can tell if you're doing it just right on your farm during today's Iron Talk. Whether you're farming way up north, have heavy soils that you feel need tillage, or just have a ton of residue to deal with, if deep tillage is one of those jobs you need to do in the fall, it's important that you do it correctly so you're not wasting your time or making things worse on your farm. The one tool that you need to carry with you in walking fields or doing tillage is a spade. I prefer a tile spade, and here's what you do. Just go out behind your tillage implement, put the shovel in the ground, and stand on it. If the shovel goes all the way down into the soil, chances are your tillage has successfully broken up the compaction in your soil. I love to tell the story of when Brian and I were in Eastern Europe, we were in Ukraine. Our group stopped at a field where a farm worker was doing some deep tillage. I went behind his tractor and deep ripper, and my shovel would only go in about six inches deep and it stopped. The operator needed to make some adjustments to the tillage implement to get deeper, and he also needed more horsepower to do the job right. If you don't get through the compaction layer now, your crop won't get through it either next spring. Also, take a look at your tillage floor if you're doing full-scale tillage. Just brush away the loose soil on the top and see where the bottom of your tillage implement is running. We'd like to see that flat. A shallow root pit could be used as well to analyze the job you're doing. Now, if that tillage floor is uneven, it won't give every plant in the field an equal opportunity to compete and yields will suffer. So this fall, whether you've done your tillage already or not, take a spade out into your fields and check to see where that hard pan is and also watch your tillage floor for evenness if you're doing conventional tillage. You'll have better results from your tillage and better yields next year. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show. We're on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.